In this episode of Retro Now, I want to take this and this and build a modern cycle exact version of the Commodore 1541 disk drive. If you've seen some of my other videos on this channel or you've uh, followed me on Instagram, you'll probably know that I've got quite a nice collection of vintage Commodore Vic 20s and Commodore 64s. Now, to load software onto those machines, I, uh, on the Commodore 64s, I use the Kung Fu Flash, um, but I also use this. This is the SD to IEC device, and this is a particularly nice little uh, example of that device from the future is 8-bit, and it's uh, modeled to look like a miniature Commodore 1541 disk drive. Um, but that, the great thing about that is that it works on both the Commodore 64 and the VIC 20s that I have. Um, but apparently it's not uh, completely compatible with a uh, Commodore 1541 drive. It does have problems with some of the fast load cartridges out there. Uh, so I thought I'd also take a look at, at the Pi 1541. Now what this is, is a, a, a hat that sits on top of a Raspberry Pi 3. And apparently it gives you cycle exact uh, emulation of a Commodore 1541 disk drive. Uh, also, what's nice about this is it's got uh, a pass-through on it, so if you look at the um, SD to IEC, for example, you can just plug that in, but you can't daisy-chain them to have multiple drives. Uh, with this one, you can. Um, and so what this does, that sits on top of a Raspberry Pi 3, as I say. Um, the problem I had up until now, I've managed to get hold of this quite easily. Uh, this particular example I got off from a seller on eBay. But the problem I had, obviously, at the moment, Raspberry Pis are quite hard to get hold of, and... If you can get hold of them, they're quite expensive. But I was lucky enough recently to uh, pick this up. This is a Raspberry Pi 3, and it's the A Plus model. And I actually got that from for retail price, so that was really good. Uh, and it's also the model I prefer with the hat because um, it's a slightly smaller size than the you know the normal Raspberry Pi 3 board, and that sits on there quite nicely. You can put that into a nice little case. I've got a case here that you can use. Anyway, so I thought I'd uh, take the opportunity today to. Uh, go through this and make a video and share my experience of building it and setting up with you. Okay, so I've just got everything laid out here that I'm going to need to build this. Um, starting off, we've got the Pi 5041 IO adapter itself. This is a pre-built model that I got off of eBay, but it is open source, so you could potentially build one of these yourself. Um, this is the model with two IEC ports on it, but there are a couple of different variations on that, including one that works with the Pi Zero. Uh, there's just some standoffs there that we're going to need. Uh, this is a little OLED display that clips onto the uh, Pi hat. Got some SD cards. And then I've got the Raspberry Pi 3 itself. This is, as I say, the A plus model. Um, and this is the one I, I prefer this one, although I mean, I, I kind of got this because it was the first one that became available. But um, if I take it out, it's the smaller version. It doesn't have as many USB ports as the full size one. Or an Ethernet port, but if I just turn this over and put the Pi hat against it, you'll see they're very close in dimension, which means hopefully I can build quite a nice little compact device. Next up, I've got my serial cable, and then lastly, I've got my case, which uh, for this I'm using the Pi Bow case from Pi Moroni, and that's made up of several layers of plastic uh, which fit underneath and around the Raspberry Pi. I do do this case in a couple of different variations, one of which is a rainbow colours, which actually quite nicely matches the colours of the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64 badges. Uh, but for me, I've got the one that's sort of made up of uh, different sort of smoky grey colours. Uh, I'm going to need to take this plastic off. Uh, probably going to need to do that on all the various layers by the look of it. I'm also going to need to look at the instructions to find out how to put this together as well. I think this is probably the base, uh, but I need to have a look at that. However, before I do that, I need to put on a heat sink onto the processor of my Raspberry Pi just to make sure it all stays nice and cool in the case. Uh, this is attached with some thermal tape. And I'm just going to need to be a bit careful about how I put that on. It's going to need to be nicely uh, lined up with the processor just so that when I come to put the case on it'll all fit together nicely. So I just need to put that on like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, pleased with that. 
and then next up I need to put these standoffs on so they just need to be screwed onto the Raspberry Pi itself and then when we put it all together the Pi hat will screw into these standoffs as well and keep it all nice and secure and tightly put together. And there we go, through the magic of video, that's all four standoffs uh, attached and ready to go. Next up we need to put the case together, so we start off with the uh, clear Perspex base, then these middle layers, I've got three middle layers that are all numbered, that need to go on. And then they're topped off with this clear uh, top cover. Okay, so apparently I need to put the first two layers on like this and then the Raspberry Pi should just sit in the middle of those there we go then I need to put the third layer on and just make sure that goes around the heatsink on the processor and around the standoffs just need to be a little bit careful with this because this is quite fragile at this point and then that's topped off with the clear top cover there you go that's the case and that just then needs to be uh, put together with these four nylon nuts and bolts so at the moment it's quite uh, it's quite flimsy feeling but I think once those go in to each corner that should uh, make it feel a bit more solid so let's just get those on uh, and this just at the moment it's all sort of sliding around but I think once I get those four bolts through there that should bring it all nice and uh, tightly together there we go that feels much better so uh, just need to flip that over and then put the uh, nuts on just a little bit fiddly because they're so small uh, but it does come with a little spanner there to tighten them up which is really really helpful and there we go, through the magic telly again, that's all four uh, nuts and bolts put together and tightened up. And the base is ready to go and attach our uh, Pi 1541 I.O. adapter onto. So just that just goes onto the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. And that sits uh, on top of those uh, four standoffs that we put on earlier. There we go. And then I just need to screw the pie hat down uh, with these little screws onto the standoffs. And then finally we just need to attach the little um, display uh, that goes on top of the Pi 1541 and that just goes on to these pin headers here on the board. Uh, you just need to make sure you're putting that on the right way around. And that's it, it doesn't need um, screwing down or anything like that, it just sits on there quite nicely like that. And there we go. That's the Pi 1541 uh, itself built, and as I say, it makes quite a nice little compact uh, device. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is configure the SD card that we're going to use with this. So to do that, we need to head over on to the Pi 1541 website uh, by Steve White. Steve is the brains behind this device, and I shall leave uh, uh, links to this in the description below. Um, from here we can download the binaries that we need to go onto the SD card itself. So we just download those now. And I also need to download uh, some firmware for the Raspberry Pi. There's a few files that we need to take off of that. And there are links to, hit to that here. I've already downloaded that though, so we'll, uh, we'll get on to doing that in a minute. Uh, there's lots of information on this website, so lots of background about the project itself. Um, how the Pi 1541 differs from an SD to IEC. And there's lots of background here around why my Steve built this in the first place. Uh, it just shows you that uh, yeah, 
goes so when you first boot it up it boots almost into like a basic sd to iec device and then once you select a disk image it will then uh, go into emulation mode uh, there's instructions here on how to set up your sd card so we'll go through that in a second uh, some information on how to build a cable for yourself there's some schematics here for the couple of different variations of device that uh, you can build all the parts that you might need to build a device if you're going to do this yourself or as I say in my case I uh, opted to get a pre-built one off of eBay uh, and then there's some details about the options file uh, you need to edit uh, some bits in there that we'll need to go in and edit before we can use this uh, again go through that in a second okay so next up we need to set up our SD card so we'll start off by uh, formatting that uh, you need to use the FAT32 file system 32k allocation units and then I'm just going to give that a, a label of uh, let's say PI1541 select quick format and away we go okay so now that's done we need to start putting our files on there so I'm just going to go over to my downloads folder um, let's start with the Raspberry Pi firmware there's three files we need off of there so we need bootcode.bin, fixup.dat, and start.elf. And just copy those over to the SD card. Just going to check there, they're okay, yep. And then we need to copy all the files from the binary that we downloaded from the website. So again, just highlight those. Uh, There's a 1541 directory and three files. And then we drag those over to the SD card. <laughs> And again, go back and check that they're all there. Now you're also going to need some additional files. I'm just going to download those and put them on. Uh, you'll need, at the very least, you're going to need uh, a ROM file for the 1541 drive. Um, I've got a few on there that I've downloaded. And again, I'll leave links to where you can find these in the description below. Um, and then in the files, uh, uh, the 1541 directory, I've just got some D64 file and a couple of prog files in there to test out, including this Ghost and Goblins arcade one, which apparently is a good test of it, uh, at least according to the website. Okay, now we need to edit this options.txt file. So there's a few bits in here I need to go through and change. There's lots and lots of options in here that uh, you can go through, including uh, which uh, um, ROM files to use there's some options around the speaker there if you've got one of those on there uh, for the LCD display as well we need to set that up uh, you can reconfigure the buttons and you can even set up a, a rotary encoder uh, to use on there so right let's go to the top so as I'm using the option B model with the two ports on it I need to uh, uncomment this line I also want to use the uh, the 1541 2 drives uh, ROM file, so I need to specify that as my default ROM file. I also put one in here for the I've got a 1581 ROM file on there as well. Uh, I'm using the 8-bit character file, so I need to uncomment that. That's the uh, charge in file that I'd, I'd copied over. I do have the LCD display so it's important you uncomment one of these lines here for that to work otherwise you'll just end up with a blank display when you come to switch the device on. Uh, there's a little logo you can come on when you first boot it up so an image of a 1541 drive I'll go for the 1541 2 and then I just need to do that uh, display temperature equals 1 so I get the temperature display coming up as well so I can just see if everything's running nice and cool. Okay, so we're now ready to put our SD card into the Raspberry Pi. So that just goes in under there like that. And then we can boot it up. I'm all plugged into the power. I've also plugged it into my HDMI monitor to get the display on there. So let's switch it on and see what we get. Okay, so we get that logo for the uh, 1541 drive and then a list of files that were in the 1541 directory on the SD card. So we can move through there using the buttons on the, uh, the Pi Hat and select an image. So that's a program file. Let's go down and select a, a D64 file. So 
see what happens there. Let's try another one. Yeah, and you see then you get like a listing at pretty much as you would on a, a Commodore 64 if you uh, when it did a listing of the uh, disk. Uh, you can also plug a keyboard into the Raspberry Pi to control this as well, but uh, it seems to work quite well with the buttons. Okay, so let's try connecting this up to my Commodore 64. I've got a serial cable here, nice new one. Um, make sure everything's switched off before you plug anything in. So plug one end into the serial port on the Commodore 64. And then plug the other end into one of the ports on the, uh, the Pi 1541. I think you can use either of those. So let's just plug it into one of those. And then we're ready to uh, switch that on, see what we get. Okay, so I think we need to switch the, uh, the Commodore 64 on before we get the list of uh, files on the SD card. And yep, there it goes, it comes up. Okay, so let's go over to the uh, the Commodore 64 now and try and do a load. I'm gonna. So when you first power it on, um, the Pi 1541 goes into a sort of SD to IEC mode, so we can load up the file browser as you would on the SD to IEC device that I showed you at the beginning, and we get the familiar sort of list there. If you've used one of those devices, this is sort of same sort of experience. But the difference with the uh, Pi 1541, once I go into one of these images, it then switches over to emulation mode and it's then emulating uh, a 1541 disk drive. So there you go, you get the contents of the disk that you would, or that we just saw on my uh, monitor. And if we go over to the monitor, you can see like disk activity being shown there. So although the HDMI monitor is not essential, you can quite happily control this with the little screen that's on top. It does give you some useful information. And just let that run through. Looks to be working okay though. And there we go, that seems to be uh, working okay. So it says on the, uh, the Pi 1541 website that this is a good test to see whether the chip on your uh, Pi 1541 is working correctly. If this loads up and it's in colour, it should be good. Okay, so let's go through now and try and find another image to load up. And this time I'm going to get it to emulate uh, the 1541 drive. See there, I've got the uh, listing of files that are on that disk. And then if I go back over to my Commodore 64 now and just do a directory listing, we should get the same uh, list of files. So if I do a load with a dollar, so load dollar comma eight, that will then go away and load the contents of that disk. So it's just like I'd put that disk into a 1541 drive works in the same or should work in the same way so if I do a listing there and there we go then we get the contents of that uh, space taxi disk so I should be able to now load space taxi and that should go away and load the game I'm going to try running it, but I'm not sure it's going to work because I should have done comma, uh, comma 8, comma 1, and I didn't. No, so let's try that again. Let's load space taxi, comma 8, comma 1, and then that should load it into the correct part of memory. And that looks like it might be running better this time. There we go, it's going into loading up as it would uh, on a 1541 drive. If you go back to my monitor, you can see the disk activity there. Now this does take quite a while to load, so I'm not going to bore you uh, and, and make you sit through it, but it does. It uh, took about uh, you know a few minutes to load up. So, 
But there we go, it's loaded successfully. And uh, it's a great game as well, by the way. I, I love Space Taxi, so... Uh, I'll just give you a few minutes of watch, uh, watch of the demo running on that. But that is one of the things I am going to have to look at, is perhaps... Uh, Getting this speeded up with uh, uh, Jiffy DOS, try it Jiffy DOS, one of my other machines has got Jiffy DOS on it, the one I'm using for this demo hasn't unfortunately. And I also want to get it going with uh, a fast load cartridge as well, that's one of the things that started me off on this whole journey was finding out that the SD to IEC drives aren't always compatible uh, with uh, fast load cartridges because the difference is the SD to IEC isn't running code whereas the uh, the Pi 1541 runs the same sort of code that a 1541 drive would. I mean, in essence, a 1541 drive is another computer. It's got uh, a 6502 chip in it and everything. So, Anyway, this is a really great device. I'm really pleased with it and uh, looking forward to playing with it some more. Well, I guess that's it for this episode, but I'm sure I'm going to revisit the Pi 1541 in a future episode once I've had a chance to play around with it a bit more. I'd certainly like to get it going with Jiffy DOS and try it out with a fast load cartridge or anything that helps speed up those load times. If you enjoyed this video, then please let me know by liking it with a big thumbs up and please leave comments as well. What did you think of the Pi 1541? Is this a useful device when we already have things like the SD to IEC or the Kung Fu flash cartridge? If you're new to the channel, you haven't done so already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click on the bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload new content to the channel. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and wherever you are, stay safe, keep well, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Retro Now. Music